My name is Girish Joshi. I'm a professor of anesthesiology and pain management at the University of Texas Southwestern Medical Center in Dallas, Texas. First of all, I want to thank the meeting planners for inviting me to speak. I'm going to speak on patient-related outcomes in ambulatory surgery. These are my conflicts of interest. I've received honoraria from Baxter and Pasira Pharmaceuticals. In the US, approximately 60 to 65% of all surgical procedures are performed on an outpatient basis. Implementation of enhanced recovery programs have further allowed migration of surgical procedures from the inpatient to outpatient setting. In addition, ambulatory surgery is associated with significant cost savings while allowing superior 30-day outcomes. Therefore, ambulatory surgery helps meet the triple aim of healthcare, and that is patient satisfaction, population health, and value. The metrics used to assess safety and success of ambulatory surgery include clinical outcomes such as mortality and morbidity, and administrative outcomes such as duration of stay in the ambulatory surgery center, unplanned admission rates, visits to acute care center and hospitalization after discharge and overall costs. However, these metrics do not address patient experience and satisfaction. In this era of consumer di driven care, there is increased focus on patient centered care. It's suggested that we need to shift from what's the matter with you to what matters to you approach. This is called as patient-centered care. Patient-centered care emphasizes patients' needs and expectations. Patients value the overall experience of their surgical care and return to baseline, and thus that needs to be given priority. Patient-centered care can be assessed using patient-related outcomes. Inclusion of patient-related outcomes in the traditional metrics provides an opportunity to improve overall patient care. There are several patient-related outcomes that have been described. They can be classified as physical outcomes, such as lack of pain, nausea, vomiting, return of appetite and ambulation, lack of sleep disturbances and lack of fatigue, and ultimately return to activities of daily living. Or mental outcomes such as lack of anxiety, depression, and cognitive dysfunction. Social outcomes such as ability to participate in social roles and activities and financial outcomes. These outcomes can be measured by several tools. The most recommended tool for early recovery measurement is the quality of recovery scale. And for late recovery, it's a World Health Organization Disability Assessment Scale or the Patient Reported Outcome Measurement Information System Scale. Ambulatory surgery, in fact, improves patient experience and facilitates improved patient-related outcomes. Ambulatory facilities are smaller and less bureaucratic than hospitals and thus provide more personal and intimate care. In fact, hospitals can be intimidating for our patients and their family. Ambulatory surgery centers are conveniently located and allow easy access to the patients. Also, recovery at home is important because the patients are recovering in a familiar environment, which minimizes disruption to their daily living. Also, recovery at home avoids sleep deprivation, immobilization, infection, and medical errors that are common in hospitalized patients. Recovering at home also maintains sensory and cognitive stimulation through interaction with family and friends. This 
would improve patient experience and thus patient satisfaction. One of the key steps in improving patient care and patients applying patient-centered care is having the patient play an active role in their healthcare decisions. This is also called as shared decision-making. There are several decision aids that can be used to inform patients about available evidence, also encourage participation and help evaluate their preferences and values in healthcare choices. These decision aids can be presented in various forms, either through websites, through printed materials, videos, phone calls, or even face-to-face -face discussions. Patient education sets the realistic goals and expectations. Not only what the patient should be expecting of physicians or the ambulatory facility, but also what is expected of the patients and their caregivers. Part of patient education is providing them instructions. For example, giving them advice regarding the duration of fasting period, which should be reduced as much as possible, and also emphasizing hydration during the fasting period. We provide specific advice to our patients that they need to drink plenty of water during the fasting period, and then drink water before they leave home to come to the ambulatory surgery center. Another aspect of instruction is the approach to patient's pain management. We emphasize to the patients that our aim is to reduce pain intensity to an acceptable level, improve function and allow ambulation. And though patients will be asked about pain scores, pain management will not be guided based on pain scores. Patients are instructed about coping strategies and cognitive behavioral therapy that would improve patients' post-operative mental outcomes, such as reduction anxiety. Ambulatory surgery shifts the burden of post-op care on the patients and their family who may be unprepared, making them vulnerable. Therefore, it is important that we prepare the patient to assume the responsibility of being active participants in the post-op care and rehabilitation. Patients should understand when to seek medical attention, which will reduce unnecessary visits to the acute care facility and hospital readmissions after discharge home. Thus, patient education reduces patients' anxiety by understanding what are they supposed to do after discharge home. Use of digital technology provides a novel approach to track the patient's self-management, mobility, nutritional status, and mental health. D digital aids can be used to allow patients make informed decisions regarding identifications of potential complications, and early identification of these complications allows to identify suboptimal recovery in a time frame that minimizes delay in implemented, uh, uh, implementation of treatment. This is one of the studies that looked at implementation of an e-health program where patients were provided with perioperative personalized care which manage their recovery expectations as well as post provided guidelines or guidance to tailor the patient's requirements. The study found that this personalized e-health intervention enhanced recovery to, of normal activities as compared to usual care. The authors emphasized that implementation of educational and supportive e-health intervention should become standard of care. To summarize, patient-centered care improves patient experience and patient-related outcomes. Patient education and engagement in their care is the key component of patient-centered care. Real-time assessment using digital aids 
allows individualized care and facilitates recovery and should improve overall patient satisfaction. It is imperative that we measure patient-related outcomes using validated tool as a routine part of patient evaluation. Thank you.